Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, since oh, that's cool, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I, I hear it. I'm not sure if you guys hear it as well. Don't worry about it. It's started recording. That's what I was checking so that uh, later on you guys should be able to view this recording as and when you like. Okay, so um, this is the famed dude. I can't move him. He's the only guy in this entire simulation who I can't move around. Yeah, everything else I can put wherever I want. I can move this around. I can move the cannon up, up or down. I'm sorry, left or right. Basically, this is nothing but the X and Y axis. Do you guys see that right away? The cannon, the lines represent X and Y axis. Does everyone see that? Yeah, so don't worry about it. We are only going to be concerned about a couple of things. Yeah, we are only going to be concerned about displacement and distance. We are not going to talk about uh, things like, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, things like, what do you call this? Um, velocity, acceleration. Yeah, velocity maybe a bit, but not so much acceleration and stuff. Um, so, you guys remember the formulae that we did from uh, last class, the ones that we derived? You know, V is equal to U plus AT, S equal to UT plus a half AT square. Does everyone remember that? Let me just write that down for convenience sake. Or let me open the page that has that on the, on the classroom, yeah? Just hold on. So if you want, you can switch between this window and the classroom window. I've, I've, upload, I've uploaded the link to the different equations, yeah? If you guys want to take a look at that, okay? So notice that there's something over here. You guys remember this? This is that tape which we use to measure things. This is the base of the tape. This is the end. And I can just move it around here, yeah? just like a small measuring tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this at the center, basically the X and between the X and Y axis. And I'm just going to place a target anywhere I want. The target doesn't matter at this point. Um, I'm not going to be changing these other parameters. You see, there are many things. Yeah, mass, diameter, air resistance, a lot of fancy things. I'm not going to worry about all that. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the angle and we're going to see how it goes from there. Is there a way to chat? Yeah, sure there is. So uh, on, on top of your uh, window, the window that has this simulation, there should be a chat button. Yeah, there's a call, there's a phone button and the chat button. So if you click on the chat button and then you type, you can type. But this works only if it's not in a full screen mode. Do you follow what I just said? Are you able to see that? Okay, great. Now the only issue here is that I don't know which one of you is viewer two, which one's viewer three, and which one's viewer five. Yeah, that's the only drawback of this. Okay, five is J. That's great. Yeah, just okay. Yeah, just type your name. I get the number right next to it. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna try and remember this. If I don't remember this, you guys have to. Uh, okay, cool, great. So you guys can just use this to chat. Perfect. So, yeah, uh, you guys know how all this works already. So, as I told you, we're only going to be concerned with displacement and distance, not so much with speed, maybe a little bit about ve velocity, but mainly distance and speed. So, yeah, we're not going to be changing the mass, diameter, all that's the same. Let's, uh, for safety's sake, I'm just going to say we will click erase every time before we start things off. So, I'm going to, I've noticed that I've made the angle. 75 degrees and look at the settings and everything has to be like this before you start. I'm going to hit fire now, okay? You should be able to see the trajectory right away. Um, the motion will be in frames, so you may not see a continuous trajectory, but you should be able to see that it's ended. Do you guys see that? Does everyone see that right now? That the... Okay, awesome. So now I'm going to measure the distance, yeah? Am I correct in saying distance, by the way? Am I measuring the distance? What am I doing? Am I measuring this distance? Yes or no? Ah, good job, good job. So you guys are not asleep. We are measuring the displacement, exactly. And the value is 16.6 .6 meters, right? So if I want to calculate the velocity in this situation, it would simply be this distance, 16.6, .6, divided by the time. Do you guys see the top corner? Not top corner, sorry. The middle top has three things. Yeah, range, height, and time. Right? So we're going to divide that and we will get a value. What value will that be? Let's take a look at the class now for this thing. You don't have to switch tabs. You can switch tabs only if you want to check the answer that I am talking about. Basically, we get a velocity of something like 
4.6 meters per second. Yeah, these numbers don't matter too much, but the point is you, you should be able to do this using the simulation itself. Yeah, so this is what we've got so far. Now, notice that there are small plus signs on this trajectory. These plus signs are notations when they tell you that, okay, the first plus sign shows that one second has passed. Second one shows that two seconds have passed and the third one is three seconds. Does everyone see these plus signs, these black plus signs? Okay, cool. So now I want to find out what is the displacement in first second of flight. In the first second, yeah? First second being time. So I just take this measuring tape. I don't move the base. Yeah? I just move the tip, which is the head of this tape, and I put it over here. So do you guys see now that the displacement is almost, say, 13.3 meters, something like 13.3 meters? Everyone able to see that? OK, great. Now, um, so the velocity would simply be 13.3 divided by 1, because that's the time that's traversed. So that's the velocity. Now, if I want to see what is the displacement at the end of two seconds. Remember, I'm talking about duration, and I'm talking about duration from the start, yeah? Hence, the end of two seconds. All this time, I'm talking about duration from the starting point, which is when the kind fired. This displacement now is approximately 17.9 meters. Yeah? Everybody clear so far? I know this is really simple stuff. Nothing really to understand. I'm just trying to go slow so that you follow what, what comes next. OK. Now, the next question that I want to ask you guys is, what is the velocity in the second uh, second? I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Let, let, me, let me rephrase this. Second second doesn't sound so good. What is the magnitude of the average velocity during the first two seconds of flight? Let's first do that. Let's do it step by step. That would simply be this number, which is 17.91 divided by 2. Does everybody agree with me? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang on target. Simple stuff. Now, this is an interesting point. This is what I want to discuss. Yeah. How would you figure out the magnitude of the average velocity during only the second second of this? Flight. There's no other way to say it. Huh? I'm sorry if it sounds funny, but basically, time goes between t equal to one to t equal to two. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if I want to find out the average velocity in between a particular time interval, <laughs> yeah, you took a lot of trouble to do that. Good job. I'm going to go back and see who actually is saying this. Hold on. Yeah, good job, Ashna. <laughs> OK, so remember, velocity is simply total displacement by total time. So now I'm going to move the head to the first second, because my question was, how would I determine the magnitude of the average velocity during the second second of flight, right? So are you guys clear on why I've moved this over here? Now my point of reference has changed to here, to this head. I mean, I moved this head over here. OK, great. The displacement in this second second of flight is simply 5.3 meters, approximately. 5.4, whatever. Yeah? Hence, that is also the velocity, because the time traverse is simply one second, because it's between two plus points. Clear enough? OK, very good. So these are the kind of questions that you will face. Um, maybe it will not get so tough when you have actual numbers, yeah? Because when you to do to do this with actual numbers, maybe a little bit difficult. But graphically, it's really really easy. It's not difficult, but it requires it requires more steps, stuff that you guys are not entirely used to at this point. Okay, now all this time I was talking about distance and displacement, right? So I want to find out the displacement. I'm sorry. I want to find out. Basically, the height, till now I was talking about the distance on the x-axis, right? Now I want to see the height that has traversed in the first second. So I simply move this down, and I bring it to this base. Easy enough? Yeah? This is the height that was traversed in the first second. OK. Now, is there any way for me to find out, theoretically, if I have the displacement, the total displacement, and also the height in the first second, can I find out the length, which is this 
x axis can i find that out is there any way to do that theoretically any ideas bingo good job pythagoras theorem it is yep yep so let me show you the calculation because again it would be difficult for you guys to do this on your own without a calculator and i haven't asked you guys to get calculators just hold on a second you can switch back to the class slide now the class slide shows you that the height square was simply 13 or whatever you know the this is the displacement that we noted in the first second the total displacement at this distance and this was what we got was 12.5 and we need to find out what this is so this simply by using pythagoras theorem you get this make sense you can switch back to the simulation now make sense to everybody okay great great cool you can switch back to the simulation now so how this graph is useful let's verify what we just got we got something like 4.24 meters right let's see if that is right it was somewhere here so now i'm going to do the same exercise again bring this guy over here measure this distance okay it seems like we are off a little bit do you guys see why do you guys see why the calculated value and the actual value is off not actual um experimental let's say no what do you think does anyone have any idea why they could justify that there's a bit of a difference there's no trick here it's quite straight forward the reason why this happens yeah exactly it maybe it wasn't a right angle maybe because what i did was i yeah theoretically it has to be a right angle right but when i actually doing things experimentally no not really because it's a curve because see what i did was i measured this right and i measure and i and i moved this base from here so what i could have done is there might, might have been an error right instead of placing it right back from where i did initially so there's a very small difference it's not a big difference it's a very very tiny difference it was 4.24 and now it's 4. Point something here yeah? or something like 4.5 or what 4.7 okay yeah 4.7 meters so if i move it back and then i measure it it gives me or oh, not move it back what am i doing if i move it forward a little bit and then i do the same thing and also remember i have no way to know where exactly that height was yeah i don't if i don't have that marker so you guys see that there is some experimental error that's creeping and that's all it is it's not an issue that okay pythagoras was wrong or anything what i'm trying to say here is that when you do actual experiments uh, if you take up engineering after this or even in school you will always have some sort of an error do you guys see that because you're doing it physically and we are not machines it has its good points and its bad points with me so far how there is an error okay and another point is that we are using less precise values even if you are amazing at you know measuring the thing and writing down doing exact calculations remember all the calculation that is was just with single decimal place whereas this has two decimal places right so there so there are a couple of important things that you guys have learned so far yeah how to figure out displacement and the distance yeah the blue part is actually just the distance in this entire trajectory and the yellow that i'm using is the displacement that's clear to everybody that's very straight forward i don't think anyone have a doubt there then we figured out the idea of time yeah time as a duration first we do time as an instant how we pointed out these black dots not dots <laughs> black crosses yeah that's time is the instant we this we don't specify time equal to zero but that's obviously before the cannon fires once the cannon has fired it traces its trajectory and it has three points these are instances in time if we calculate velocity then we're using time as a duration yeah one second in this case and two seconds in the other case for the velocity and another idea was we can also change the reference point from t equal to 0 to t equal to 1 same area same idea yeah it's delta difference in distance displacement divided by difference in time and hence you get the velocity to be uh simply just this value 5.45 or whatever 5.3 we got earlier are all these points clear to you guys extremely important these are things we have learned in class and i'm just showing it to you practically as well in this in these simulations okay very good now we can uh, close this simulation just hold on i'm going to 
share my uh, window. I'm going to share another window. Let's do another one, yeah? The other cool simulation. Just give me a moment. Do you guys have any question on this? You can, we can switch back to the class now. Does anybody have any questions on these points that we've discussed today? Okay, great. Just give me a moment. I'll switch back to the other simulation. Just give me a second. Okay, great. Now, you should be able to see this dude. Everyone sees that? Let me reset everything. That's what we do before any simulation. Guy standing right in the middle like he's a boss. And you see a couple of things, position, velocity, acceleration. Everyone sees that? No, sir? I hope, oh, that was for the previous thing. <laughs> okay, for the question. Okay, great. Yeah. So, um, how it's going to work is, the tutorial, I'm sorry, the learning lab session, it has details on how to launch these things and all of that is there in the notes. I have already loaded everything, so I'm just showing it to you. But there are detailed instructions on how to do these things. And also the labs themselves are uploaded on the, what do you call this, um, the course area. So you guys can do this on your own as well whenever you like. Okay, just hold on. So let me explain what this guy is sitting here and being so happy about. He's going to be running very funnily in a few minutes. Do you see, you guys see the scale at the bottom? This is simply a, you know, distance marker. We're not going to be talking about displacement at this point. You can see that he's only, actually, I'm sorry, what am I saying? We are going to talk about displacement, yeah? Because it has a direction. It's going left or right. If it goes left from this center position, it's negative. And towards the right are all positive values. You guys are clear on that? Remember, that this is only an indicator of the displacement. It is not an indicator of the value of velocity or acceleration. You will know what I'm talking about in just a second, yeah? So in this simulation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check these values of velocity vector and acceleration vector. You guys will get to know in just a second why I'm doing that, yeah? You also need to make sure in this simulation that this record thing is selected and not playback. Again, all these things will be very clear to you very shortly. It may be a little bit confusing right now. Don't worry about it. As soon as I hit two and I press enter, you can see that he's ready to move towards the right. Yeah? Everyone sees that? Another interesting thing is now there's a small arrow under his foot pointing to the right. Red arrow, do you guys see that? It's a little minuscule, but do you, uh, you guys should be able to see it by now. Okay, great. What do you think is going to happen? First of all, do you think anything is going to happen if I make this negative 2? From 2, if I make it negative 2? Is anything going to happen or is it going to be the same thing? He will turn. <laughs> the most obvious thing. That's awesome. He will turn. Also, the arrow will go to the left. Excellent. Will the length of the arrow change? Okay, let's see. Yeah, exactly. Exactly what you guys said. So, just trying to show you how this whole thing works, yeah? Now, if I increase this, now you guys should have figured this out by now. If I increase this to something like negative 5, the arrow simply becomes bigger, which means the arrow is a vector. That's why, you know, that velocity vector, when I have it ticked, it shows it. When I don't have it ticked, it shows me nothing, yeah? That's why it has a magnitude given by the length and also a direction. Everyone is clear on that idea, the idea behind vectors? <clears throat> okay, awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the simulation itself. I'm going to change the velocity to something like negative 1.5, which means he's going to be at the same direction. Magnitude changes a little bit. I'm going to run this simulation for a couple of seconds and yeah, I'll show you what I, just give me a moment. Okay, I'm going to pause it at about this time. I'm going to play this back a little slowly for you guys so that we can actually, so you see the slider which is going from fast to slow. This is basically, this is available only when you go to play playback. When you have record, it's not available. Do you guys see that? So it's just a way of slowing down your video or, you know, speeding it up. 
So I'm going to make it extremely slow so that I can control this uh, simulation easily. Just give me a moment. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this simulation at 2.1 seconds, yeah? So, oh, I think I hit reset. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I use the keyboard and I hit reset by mistake. I Let me just do this once again. Sorry about that. Redoing that same stuff. OK, I'm just going to play this. I'm going to pause it at 2.1 seconds, yeah? Let me move him back. OK, hold on, hold on, just one second. Let me do this once again. I'm goofing up. OK, let's record what he's doing for some time. Pause this. And let's do playback. Notice that when I hit playback, he's supposed to come back. Sometimes this thing glitches because, well, software and software does weird things. Um, I did not hit the slow button. Let me redo this once again. Rewind it. I've made it as slow as possible so that I can pause it whenever I want. I want to pause it at 2.1 seconds. Yeah? Okay. So, no, please note the position at 2.1 seconds. You guys see that it's negative 3.13? Yeah? Okay, very good. Now, can you guys multiply velocity and time and tell me what that value comes out to be? Velocity into time? Yeah? See, the velocity is fixed. Ah, exactly. It's 3.15, right? So there's some error. Um, yes, that's what I was looking for, the negative sign. It's minus 3.15. Good job. The idea is, please do not forget the direction. If the velocity has a direction, that means the position has a direction. Because time, obviously, is directionless. Time is always going to be positive. Everyone sees that? Extremely important. Please do not forget the negative sign. OK, good job. Now, I'll tell you why I did all of this. I'm going to run this simulation for a couple of more seconds and do the same thing. Yeah, from 2.1, I make it, say, 4.1 or something. OK, 4.1 seconds. Ah, it's gone much higher than that. OK, anyway, basically, whatever value you get, the same drill. Yeah, you multiply this with this. I'm sorry. Yeah, you multiply time with velocity, and you should get an approximate position. Why I'm doing this is because uh, I want to, again, point out the idea of errors, which you guys have figured out by now, right? That there has to be exactly viewer 6. Hold on. Who's viewer 6? Let me go back and see. Uh, Arjun. So why is it given as 3.13? Because remember, the time that I see over here is 2.0, right? Uh, let, let me rerun that simulation. Hold on. Notice that it will probably not be 3.13 this time. It's probably going to be more or less. It won't be exactly the same. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, see? Now I stopped at the same time, 2.1. And the position is 3.19. Anyone has an explanation why? Because the idea is that time, I'm only measuring this to one decimal place, the time, yeah? It could be 3.15 or 3.19. Sorry, not 3, 2.19 or it could be 2.101. Exactly. We are talking about differences in, you know, hundreds of milliseconds, or tens of milliseconds maybe. You know, that's the difference that comes into the picture. Clear? If you increase this to 2.13 or 2.15 or multiply it with minus 1.5, you'll probably get this value. That's that's what I was trying to. That's the point I was trying to drive home in the earlier example as well. So it's good that you pointed this out, because this is a dynamic simulation. Yeah, in the previous one was more or less static. We were looking at we had finished the simulation, then we were analyzing distance and all that. But this is dynamic, so it's good that you brought this up. Now the reason I am doing all this is to give you the examples of I mean the importance of graphs. I'm going to switch over to the other tab. In all this time I was on the introduction tab. I'm going to change it to the charts tab. Going to repeat the same drill. Make this velocity 1.5. I'm sorry, negative 1.5 because that's what we did earlier. Yeah, and yeah, the same stuff. I'm going to show vector, exact same stuff. 
just gonna play it for some time now same thing yeah nothing different i'm not doing anything different at this point the only thing different so to speak is that you're able to see some sort of graphs being charted right everyone is able to see the three graphs blue red and um, green yes okay great notice that there are some plus arrows right so that's basically so that i can magnify this thing so what i did was i just magnified this graph so that you're able to see clearly that there is some velocity it wasn't zero velocity so you can play around with these graphs is very very cool stuff now what i want you to do is um tell me if there's any sorry relationship between this middle graph and the position that we calculated using the numbers any relation can we do something to this graph to also get that value that we got earlier that 3.15 value yep excellent excellent the area under this graph so if i take approximately where do i see 2.1 mm, give me a second so the y axis is this okay huh here we are okay so 2 2.1 would be somewhere over here and if i multiply that with this basically i would get the exact same numbers which is 3.15 so what i was trying to show you is what you can what you guys did during the equations the equations were derived from the graphs now we're going back to the graphs itself clear the idea behind this graph all you have to do is find out the area under this graph remember that the area is negative is that clear to everybody why the area is negative because the y axis is below zero you can see that clearly so this height is basically negative and this length was well time so it's positive extremely important point so whether you use the graph or the equations you'll get the same value yeah with the sign you cannot make an error there at all okay good stuff another important thing i want you guys to see is that notice the shape of the displacement time graph yeah position as is said in this uh, box on top so you see the blue line it's it should be a straight line which it is makes sense yeah because you have a constant velocity and from the graphs that we used in the first class to derive the equation of motion you had the same thing the only difference was it was upwards yeah remember that the displacement time um, graph everyone remembers that okay great and yeah obviously the shape of the velocity time graph is a horizontal line parallel to the x axis i'm going to reset all and do another small simulation play around with this for some more time now we did constant velocity now let's figure out another scenario where we have constant acceleration remember constant velocity would be uniform motion we'll discuss this more in the next class yeah where we do forces and all of that we'll talk about uniform and non uniform motion so right now if i have an acceleration of say 0.5 meters per second this dude doesn't change his direction you see that he doesn't care whether it's 0.5 or whatever the acceleration is he only changes his direction when he has a velocity notice that we're going to run this simulation again for a little longer duration i tell you why that is see something different here happening to the blue graph okay that noise was basically the dude crashing into the wall so please don't <laughs> yeah these are funny simulations um don't worry about this part of the graph where it suddenly falls off yeah the red graph or let, let me just do this once again just so that there's no confusion whatsoever um i'm going to clear it i'm going to run it i'm going to stop it before he hits hold on yeah oops hold on let me redo this whole thing so that we don't have the guy running into a wall notice that it's literally accelerating yeah like a car on a highway ah okay i stopped him from whacking into the wall now these graphs look a lot better do you guys see that there's something different in the first graph yeah that it's curved and it's curved upwards 
Do you guys see that right away? So this is basically, remember we had the equation which went S equal UT plus half AT square, or I can also say Y equal to X square, because taking Y as a position and acceleration as X, I'm sorry, not acceleration, time as X. Are you guys able to follow what I'm saying or do you want me to slow down? Do you want me to write this down on the class? Or do you guys understand what I'm saying? Hold on. I'm not, I'm not clear what you guys are saying yes to. So uh, just switch back to the class for a second. Basically, I'm saying you have S equal to UT plus half AT square. Is everyone on the class now? Okay, good. I can see you guys are typing, which means you're here. This is the same as y equal to x square. If I have u equal to zero, basically t is similar to x and some constant, yeah, some c times x square, basically. And s is similar to y. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Back to the simulation now. Not this simulation, hold on. This simulation. Okay, basically, that y equal to cx square is the equation of a parabola. Don't get scared. You will learn it soon enough. Why I'm saying that is so that you can draw parallels between that and this parabolic motion. That's what it's called. It's called a parabola. Make sense? How you got this shape and you can also relate it to the equation. Is this clear to everybody? Okay, great. And the velocity time graph is a straight line. And also the acceleration time, it's not zero. Hold on, let me just... Uh, it looks like it's zero. Let me zoom in a lot. Okay, yeah, you see that even the acceleration is not zero. Yeah, it looked like it was zero initially, but it's not. Hold on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to playback and I'm going to ask you guys to take note of uh, displacement at different points in time. I'm going to stop this at say two seconds. And two seconds, notice that the position is 0.83 and the velocity is 0.98. Do you guys see that? Yeah? Okay, great. Then um, just write this down somewhere, yeah? Because the readings that I have taken down at an early experiment were a little different. So you guys will see that every time you do this experiment, you'll get different readings because of the time thing, yeah? Milliseconds and all that. I stop again at maybe say four seconds. Yeah, here I get another position and another velocity. Please note this down, 3.95 and 2.02. Have you guys noted this down? Yes, no, maybe. Scrambling for a pen. Okay, cool. Repeat the same exercise a couple of times. And maybe stop it. Yeah, you get another position, say 6.02. Oh, really? I think it's an issue with the internet at, at your end, maybe then. Uh, is there anybody else facing that issue? Because what I have is, oh, it takes time to load, is it? Okay, I'll slow down then. Because what I'm doing here is I, I have... Uh, okay, cool. Don't worry about it. Basically, I was just trying to tell you guys that I'm noting down the position and velocity at different points in time, and they will all be slightly different than what we actually calculate. So there was nothing that you guys actually missed there. Let's go back to the class for just a second, yeah? Is everybody back to the class? Okay, good. Just hold on. What I'm going to do is I don't have that slide that I just made with the latest. Just just give me a second. I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, give me a moment. I'll pull out that table that I wanted you guys to see. One moment, please. A 
for just a second you're going to be seeing a different window yeah not the window that you were seeing so far can everybody see my what do you call this uh, presentation thing my powerpoint um slide can everyone see this it may take a couple of seconds to load up uh notice that the values on the right which is the red values are the ones that i've looked at from the simulation and noted down you can see that they are they vary a lot from the numbers that you would have had uh, i remember a few of the numbers at two seconds it was something like 0.83 and 0.98 something like that so these numbers will, will vary don't worry about that what i'm trying to say is that the calculated values are somewhere close to this so basically just verifying that the equations that we use which is s equal to ut plus half a d square for the first one first column which is the uh, calculated displacement and v equal to u plus a d which is velocity for the second um, column they're quite comparable to the values you have here yeah within maybe something like a 10 or a 15 percent error which is what i've again mentioned in the green stuff that experimental values are always going to be different than theoretical values but you must have theoretical values to see if your experiment is making sense or not because at many points in time you've designed an experiment you've spent hours into it and you run it but how are you going to check whether your design is good or not which is why you need the theory as well so you may think that uh, we have studied so much random equations and all that why do we do that so this is the reason behind the whole thing so you have some basic idea and some theories and you test those theories by using actual equations like the ones we've just performed make sense that was the idea behind all, everything we've done so far okay great <clears throat> let's uh just give me a moment you should be able to see the other screen which is the what shall i call it uh, one second please uh one sec i shared the same window again just give me a second i'm looking to share the same ah let me know when you guys can see the the simulation yeah the dude let me know when you can see him i've reset all the settings okay awesome hold on how oh, that thing went away huh hold on let me do this thing once again i want to show you i want to use the graph and ah saved him okay now another important thing is that we can use these graphs the bread graph to figure out displacement everyone's clear on that velocity the displacement is simply velocity into time which is the area under this graph yeah this triangle over here oh viewer nine can you see it now Can everybody see this um, simulation with the red graph and the blue graph and the green graph, all of that? Viewer 9, are you on the same page as everybody else? Not sure who Viewer 9 is, sorry. Uh, viewer 9 must know who Viewer 9 is. <laughs> um, I guess the person's dropped off. So I'm going to uh, continue. You can take a look at the recording. if you are facing any difficulties with the internet connection okay getting back to the point we can calculate the area under the velocity time graph from t equal to zero from t to t equal to five which is somewhere over here now if i do this you see that the height is exactly 2.4 approximately yeah not exactly approximately 2.4 and because these are all uh, graphs are usually very 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 precise since i'm using this on the computer it's very difficult for me to actually measure the right way so I'm going to do 2.4 into um, what was the time again? Five seconds, right? So what's five into 2.4? 12. Am I missing something here? What's the area of a triangle? It's 12. Yeah, you know, 12 is good. It's not 1.2. It's 12. Um, but the area of a triangle is what? Half into base into height. Guys, stop saying 12. It's six. Yeah, you guys see that? Yeah, okay, great. 
So be careful about this. Yeah, don't just randomly multiply x axis and y axis. It's always area if of the graph. Right? Everybody sees that area under the graph. So it has to be half into base into height. So there's no exact formula, right? If you see a rectangle, you find the area <clears throat> under the rectangle. If you see a triangle, use a triangle formula. If you don't see anything, then you have other cool ways of doing things. But the point being, I'm trying to tell you that it's always simply the area under the graph, which is in this case, as you have, as you have rightly pointed out, six. Clear enough? Yes? Okay, great. Now, another thing that we have not done before is we haven't used the area under the acceleration time graph, right? What do you think that's going to give you if I find out the area under the acceleration time graph? Any ideas? Excellent. Is it just velocity or I feel that you are missing something out? Perfect. Good job. It's change in velocity. Remember, acceleration, the definition of acceleration is change in velocity per change in time, right? So it's always change in velocity. Everything is change, yeah? So this, this area in the disk graph is basically change of displacement. So that's important, yeah? We're always talking about relative terms because we say that this is zero. Yeah, this point over here where the guy started off from, it could, another guy could say, no, this is 10 or this is minus 100 or whatever. But you're, it's all relative. Does everybody see that? That we're always talking in relative terms. So do not forget to mention the direction or the change or basically that stuff. Okay, very good. We notice that between time equal to zero and t equal to five, I simply have five into 0.5 which is the area of this graph, which would be what, 2.5? So that's the change in velocity, which is 2.5. And let's see, yeah, let's hold on. Let me, let me run the simulation again till 2.5 seconds. I'm sorry, till five seconds. Ah, I've already gone ahead. Hold on, I don't have to run the simulation. I can just move this guy to the left, hold on. Makes life easier. Okay, you can see that the velocity is almost exactly what we calculated is 2.48. Make sense to everybody? How we can figure out the change in velocity using the acceleration time graph? Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to play around a little bit more. I'm going to reset everything. I'm going to enter a negative velocity. And also, oops, that was too high. A negative value of acceleration. I have a couple of questions for you guys. How is this guy going to behave initially? What's he going to do initially? Left, right, upwards? Okay, initially he's going to go left. He's already turned to the left. He's going to move to the left, okay. Is it going to be a uniform motion? Uniform meaning, you know, is he going to speed up, slow down, or is he going to move in a constant way? Non-uniform, okay. Is he going to speed up or is he going to slow down? Speed up, okay, makes sense. Let's see if what you guys have said is correct. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna stop him before he hits the wall. There we go. Ah, one of you said slow down. May I ask why you said slow down, VO4? <laughs> Sorry, I'm calling you guys by numbers. Let me go ahead. Uh, Vedant, Vedant, why do you think you would slow down, Vedant? Acceleration is negative, but remember that acceleration and velocity have the same direction. I told you that everything was relative. What you are, it seems like what you are considering is negative means slow down and positive means increase. But remember, I said everything is relative, so it depends on the direction of the velocity. Okay, great that you have understood this. Are you clear? It's cool if you haven't. I can explain this in detail. This is important stuff. Have you understood this for sure? How are everybody else? Okay, great, great. Now I have another question. I'm gonna change things up a little bit. I'm gonna mix things up a little bit. Now I'm going to set the velocity to two meters per second. I'm going to change the acceleration to minus 0 0.5 meters per second square. Now, how's the guy gonna behave initially? What's he going to do initially? 
Move right, move left. Which way is he going to go? Okay. Vedan says right. Does everybody agree with him? Ah, you already stolen my second question, viewer seven. <laughs> Good job. That's the correct answer. Does everybody agree with Ashna? Yeah, does everybody see right away? We already discussed this quantitatively in class. I've told you just as a matter of fact that this is what happens. But you should be able to see that. You get a very cool graph. I'll show you in just a second. Now that everyone's on the same page, let me go ahead and do this simulation. I'm going to run this. And I'm going to stop him from hitting a wall again. So it's like a boomerang, yeah? Or a string or a rubber or something that just gets pulled back. And we stop him from whacking into the tree. Do the graphs look scary? <laughs> okay, good. So, can anyone tell me what has really happened over here in the graph? Yeah, let's just talk about the first graph, which is the blue graph. What happens in the blue graph? What does the blue graph represent? It represents displacement, obviously. What I'm trying to ask you guys is, what is this? You know, this first it increases, and then, you know, there's some high point over here, and then it goes negative again. Okay, right. So you guys are you guys are bang on target. So all of these points is going right, then he slows down, and then he comes back, and he goes to left, which is why it's become negative. Makes sense. I'm trying to now, this is a very interesting idea, yeah. At this point, the highest point of the position time graph, this is the place, this is the time at which he is the furthest away. Do you guys see that? Hence, you get a maximum in this graph. You guys see that there's a highest point, like a mountain peak or something. Everyone sees that? So these are some very interesting ideas. This is this point in any graph. If you have one maximum point, it's called a maxima. If you similarly had, if this graph was upside down, it would be called a minima. Don't worry about why it is so, but it's obviously, right? There's a maximum point, so we call it maxima. Because there's some Greek dude decided or Latin guy found this stuff out. So hence, it has funny names. And maxima and minima, right? Oh, sorry, those are plurals. That's why it's maxima and minima. <laughs> the singular form is still maximum and minimum. Uh, anyway, so also you can see the velocity, which is the red graph, does it, has the same behavior. Notice that since the acceleration is constant, hold on, let me zoom that in. You can see the green line, the acceleration is constant throughout. That's what I mentioned in this thing. Notice that the nature of the blue line, sorry, the red line does not change. It is constantly decreasing. Everyone sees that? Okay. This means that acceleration is all, in this case, acceleration is always in the opposite direction of the velocity because this graph has a negative slope. Am I making sense to you guys? What I'm saying is do not worry about where the x-axis lies, whether it lies here or here. That's what I'm talking about, right? We defined a position in the middle saying that this is x equal to 0. Hence, you have this point, or else this could be somewhere here. Same, same thing over here. It doesn't, if you don't, if you just take the absolute magnitude of the velocity, I'm sorry, the displacement, I could have this 0 at this end, yeah? At where minus 10 is. What that would mean is I would be moving this x-axis right at the end over here. And the same thing, maybe some sort of a relative to that. Similarly, this would also move down. Am I making sense to everybody or is this getting confusing? Is this clear? So this is some, these are some very cool things you can do with the graph. You run an experiment and then you can extrapolate. You see the nature of this graph. You know how it's going to go and you can figure out the different velocity at different points in time. You would take hours to, like, not, not hours, but it would be difficult initially to sit and use the formula and to predict, okay, at this point, at this 
velocity, what is this thing? And at this point, at this velocity, what is it doing? So instead of that, if you have this graph, you basically have the entire nature of his motion. And at any point, you have to say, okay, this point, you look at the x-axis, sorry, the x-axis and the y-axis, and you figure out what his displacement is, what his velocity is. Obviously, the acceleration is constant throughout. So was this a cool demonstration? Do you guys think you can do all of this on your own and also play around with this a little bit more? Yeah? Okay, great. So you will have a quiz where you guys will have to run this these simulations on your own and also figure out a few extra things um, using the things that we have learned so far. I hope that you guys do are able to do that um, easily. If you guys have any difficulties, as always, you can please use the question answer forum and I will answer questions uh, really quickly. And if any of your friends know the answer, they are most welcome to interact as well. Okay, I'm going to stop this uh, screen share business and we're gonna get back to the class, okay?